Okay, let's take a look at this, the, the, the typical stress strain behavior for uh, a metal. And in fact, it's, it's going to be similar for a polymer. And there's some similarities, um, in fact, even for... Um, for ceramics, but some differences. Uh, yeah, I should. I can't look at this. I can't. I can't talk and write at the same time. Well, maybe I can. Stress strain behavior for metals. So we're going to begin by looking at the generalized stress strain behavior for metals, and, and I'll mention along the way some similarities to the behavior in in polymers and and ceramics. I'll elaborate on those differences later. So we're plotting here stress on the vertical axis and strain on the horizontal axis. And most metals, when loaded, will have an initial linear, a straight line region. Okay, And so we could call that uh, linear. All right, certainly it's a straight line. And it has the equation of a straight line. Right, The equation of a straight line is just y equals mx plus b. So we've got stress is equal to the um, proportional uh, constant of proportionality, or the Young's modulus in this case, specifically, times the strain. That's just a straight line. And <clears throat> then we have after that, now this is a bit of a technical point, but it, it, there's a region where most materials will be nonlinear, but still elastic. Okay, now it could be extremely small, um, but I should just mention it anyway, just for the sake of completeness. So there's going to be some region that's no longer governed by Hooke's law. You see, it's not governed by that equation for a straight line. It curves. I, I tried to, to show this curving a little bit. But it's still elastic. That is, if you unloaded, you'd return to, you'd return to zero stress, zero strain. So there's going to be some region where it's nonlinear but still elastic. Uh, and in fact, we could define, this would be a fairly simple thing to define, the threshold between linear and nonlinear. And it's just, I mean, simple definition. Well, there's going to be the end of the region where it's proportional. So we would call that the proportional limit. Proportional limit. And that's all that is. It's the end of the straight line. Then, if we're going to call that the proportional limit, I suppose we could... Uh, Use introduce this term here. Well, what's the, the, the end of this region where it, it no longer is elastic? Well, we might as well just call that the elastic limit. Okay, elastic limit. And I'll come back to that in just a second. So if that's the elastic limit, then the deformation is permanent or plastic after that, and eventually it fractures. So we often draw a little X there, and fracture means it's broken into two or more pieces. So elastic limit is a term that, I mean, it makes some sense, is the end of elasticity. But a term that we want to introduce, we want to understand uh, as engineers here, is this term here I'm writing down here, the yield strength. Yield strength. When does the deformation become permanent? And this elastic limit, although it's nice and clear to define because I've got this region of elasticity followed by... I'll label this as all plastic. That's clear to define because I've got this great big white dot there. But if this was a real curve, you wouldn't have a great big white dot there. In fact, it wouldn't even be obvious where the proportional limit is. So we need some, some standard to determine some of these uh, features, particularly a property um, like this, like the yield strength. We need to define that. The other thing I just wanted to take a moment to go back to is this nonlinear elasticity. And so, actually, what I'll do is I'll do a little call out. I'm going to sketch that over here for you. Just as an aside, the stress strain behavior for an elastomer, like an elastic band, is, is highly nonlinear elastic. So it, it, it could be entirely nonlinear elastic, in fact. Um, 
So I, I don't want uh, you to think that every material has a linear elastic region. Many, many do. In fact, most metals and ceramics do. Um, a lot of polymers, in fact, do as well. But uh, but there's certainly exceptions to that. And and this region here, although I drew it fairly large, might be you know, almost vanishingly small in practice for a lot of metals. Uh, it's worthwhile, I think, just being aware of the fact that you can have behavior that's non-linear yet still elastic. All right, so we're going back to this issue of, okay, the proportional limit is just a definite end of the straight line. That's fine. But where are we going to really determine or decide on the onset of plastic or permanent deformation? So let's see. I scroll here a little bit. Okay. Let's see. Sorry. Here there we go. Add a bit of space. Okay. So we're going to... We want to define the onset of, um, of permanent deformation. So again, we're going to plot stress and strain, and we're going to have our generalized or, or typical stress strain curve for a metal fracture there. And I, I, you know, you can see this. I drew this. That where does it cease to become linear? Um, so that's. Um, that's that's a tough question, and we we want to determine we want to have a repeatable definition for the onset of plastic deformation. So in practice, what we do is we say let's just use a convenient value of strain that's sufficiently large that we know most metals have plastically deformed there. Yet it's not such a huge quantity of strain that it's close to where it's going to break. So it's just a convenient value. And that convenient value is 0 0.002, which is the same as 0.2% strain. So what we do is we take that value of strain, and then we draw a line parallel to the initial loading curve. That is, it has the same Young's modulus. And we find where that intercepts with our stress-strain curve. And the value of stress corresponding to that point is the yield strength. And in fact, specifically, we would call that the 0.2% offset yield strength. And this is just um, a convention, right? There's nothing fundamentally important about 0 0.002 uh, strain. It's just convenient. That, that's all there is to it. It's just a convenient value of strain. Okay. So sorry about that. Um, so then, then, okay, this is our curve. What else can we define on here? We've got the yield strength. Um, what about the the top of the curve there? That top of the curve. So that is well, it's the peak. It's the maximum. It's the ultimate, right? Can't get any better than that. Ultimate. Can't get any higher. It's the ultimate tensile because this is a tensile stress strain curve. Ultimate tensile stress. And then this piece here where it broke is going to be called the fracture. Um, actually, you know what? I just made a mistake. See, and this is actually this is, this is a teachable moment, right? I could pretend I did that on purpose. But why did I say st stress uh, or strength rather? And, and I'm going to change this to strength. It's not entirely wrong really to say stress. But strength is, is um, more... Um, more correct. So just a little language lesson here for you is that strength is a specific value of stress. So if we're talking about force divided by cross-sectional area, we'll say stress. All right, that's just any continue any value on that stress strain curve. But if you want to talk about a specific value, you've determined the 0.2% offset strength. It's a, it's a specific value. We use the term strength. Strength is a specific value of stress. Um, okay, so I think that has the, we've, we've discussed now um, all the important features, uh, well at least most of the, many of the important features of the stress strain behavior for a metal.